Okay, uh, today we're going to go over domain and range. Uh, you got to know these definitions just because your book seems to want you to know them. The main one they kind of looks like they want you to know is integers and real numbers. But in order to know what a real number is, you have to know what a rational and irrational number is. It sounds like I said the same word. Rational and irrational numbers. Okay, so we'll jump to the next page. Those are the definitions there. Um, we'll call this example number one. And they give us a whole bunch of points here. And in fact, I'm going to just fix one of these points so that they all seem to fall. Oh, I'm missing one. I'll put it there. Oh no, it doesn't matter if it's a function actually. Yeah, let's just do that. So these are all points along the line. Okay? Um, we're going to represent these. Now, the key for domain and range is understanding how to represent something. Okay? Now, first of all, this is not a continuous line. This is a point, then another point, then another point, okay, as you see. So the numbers in between aren't actually there, okay? So we don't have to represent them. A continuous function would be something like this. That's a straight line or, you know, a parabola. So it's touching everything in between whatever points we've put. That's what a continuous function is. Where this one is not continuous. It just represents specific points, okay? So if we're going to write the domain and range to this, domain... Do you know what that deals with? Um, the X. Yeah, that's right. Domain deals with the X, and range deals with the Y. Okay. Now, technically, domain can be written for this one. I literally just got to look at the X values. This X value is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. They got 1 for 0, 1, and 2. Okay. So I can write from negative 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. They've represented all those numbers. Even though this one doubled up right here, and there's two values of negative 1, I only need to write it once. Okay, So that could technically be the domain. And the range in this one can also be written, same idea. Uh, it goes from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? It does the same thing, just goes up to 4 from negative 3. Okay? So negative 3. 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the range. You can literally just write it like that. Now, the reason we went into integers and rational numbers is because there's a way we're going to start to represent continuous functions. Okay? Now, um, the numbers we've used, do they fulfill any of the definitions? For instance, are these, uh, how can I specifically write these? What, what definition did I use would represent these? types of numbers are these? Whole yeah, whole numbers. They're positive and negative. Do you remember what word we used for that? So with an I? Integer. Integers. That's right. <clears throat> so what this is, is these actually represent all of the integers between negative 4 and 2. Right? Every integer is represented. 3, sorry, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. These are all the whole positive and negatives of these whole numbers. So another way I can represent this, okay, for my domain, I'm just going to go down here a little. My domain could also be x is the element of all integers. We use i to represent integers. And then we put the restrictions. We put this line here such that x is greater than and equal to negative 4, but it's also less than and equal to positive 2. Okay? And the reason we want you to get used to writing things like this, and this is why they use integer, is because when we start to use continuous functions, we're going to use real numbers, and we're going to represent points uh, where they live between, or where they exist between. Okay? Right now, because these are integers, we use the letter i. Okay? So x is every integer between negative 4 and 2. What would I do for a range? than equal to the number 4. Okay? So what this is is negative uh, 4 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 2. Okay? So I've used only the less than sign both of these times. Okay? Um, do you know the trick that the bigger guy is always pointing at the smaller guy, or, or do you know some type of trick like that for greater than or less than? 
Well, either way, you're going to have to come up with one, okay? So uh, one of the tricks is always think the bigger guy is pointing at the littler guy. So I know x is greater than negative 4, so I point at it. And it technically is equal to 2, so I put the line underneath. And I know actually 2 is greater than x. 2 is the highest point, okay? So 2 is the highest point there, so it's greater than x in that instance. Okay, our second example here is we have a parabola, okay? This is our example two. And I need to represent the domain range, okay? So uh, we're going to say that this is the number five, okay? This is where the vertex of this happens to be at. Oh, sorry, not five. Uh, we'll say 5.5, okay? We'll say that's where the vertex is for this. That's what the main thing is. Now, because this is a parabola, it's technically going to go forever to the left and to the right for our domain range. So, and remember I said this was a continuous function. So on a number line, this represents every single number. It exists for every single point. So when I go to write the domain for this, our domain is x is the element or a set of all real numbers. There's no restrictions because it goes forever this way, and it'll go forever this way. Okay. So the domain is x is element or is every real number. And we say real because it represents all rational and irrational numbers along this line. Okay. Now the range is close, but not exactly the same. Our range, again, we're going to use y of er. Okay. Again, y is a set of all rational numbers. Right? It does. It's continuous. It goes down forever. But there's a point. And what's that point? Yeah. What does y have to be? Greater than or less than that? So y is less than and equal to, because it touches it, 5.5. So that's the range of that number. Okay? And that's it. That is your domain range of your parabola. It's finished. Okay, example three. They want domain range again, but they've given us something a little different. Uh, first, what I want to point out is what a whole means when we have a line. Is It means it exists up to that point, so up to negative 4, but not at that point. So any number to the right of it, because we have a line, it exists up. So it's literally just greater than negative 4, but it's not equal to negative 4. That's why we draw a hole over that point. I know it's not exactly accurate, but that's supposed to be at negative 4, okay? So they have a circle that's empty in the middle. I call it a hole, okay? What that means is it doesn't exist at negative 4, but wherever the line goes from there, so because it goes to the right, it exists at the point just to the right of negative 4. So you would say it's greater than negative if it's filled in like this, that means it does exist at that point. So it is equal to 4. So again, you see here, I have a hole at that point, And then it continues going. So let's talk about the domain in this one. Okay? So we'll talk about domain to start. First of all, is this a continuous type function here? It is and it isn't. It does continue here. It has a break, and it continues here. Okay. Now, when we're talking about domain, remember, we don't care about this too, too much about this break, especially because this filled in one takes the place of this hole. So what's actually happening is the domain is existing from here all the way straight across to here. Okay? These are specific to domain range. You won't deal too, too much with them, but you just have to know what they do mean if you see them on a test. Okay, that hole and that filled in one. So actually the domain in this one is x is every real number, again, okay? Because remember, this isn't just points. Remember, before we only had just coordinates, and there were holes in between them. Here we have actual lines representing. So x is going to be all the real numbers, so every number on a number line, such that what's the lowest x goes to? Negative 4. Negative 4. Okay, so we'll start off with negative 4. Now, is x equal to negative 4? Is it greater than and equal to negative 4? Well, remember I said about the hole, it doesn't exist at negative 4. So what it's saying is we don't put in that equal sign underneath. Okay, That's the little trick there. So we just leave it as negative 4 is less than, or x is greater than negative 4. And it goes all the way, like we said, to what we've drawn is 8 here. And because it's filled in at 8, x is less than and equal to 8. Okay? So that's your domain for that one. I know it's a little trickier because they have those little holes in now, range. Range is a funny one here. Uh, 
what is the range? We're at two. And what's the other number we're at? Four. Well, it's in between actually, it's six and four. So what's in between six oh, and four? Right. Okay. So what are the two numbers for range? Two and four. Yeah. Is it, do we use X E R or X E I at all? Is uh, is X every integer between two and five? No. Oh, sorry, not X Y. No, it's not, because it doesn't exist at 3 and it doesn't exist at 4, so we can't really use this setup for it, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really just two numbers, so our range is 2 and 5. That's it. That's all we can do to represent the range in this one. It's just two numbers, and they're horizontal, okay? Does that idea make sense? Yeah. All right, example 4. Again, domain range. Now. This is continuous. Let's focus just on domain, right? It definitely goes from negative 8 and represents every number up to 8, mm -hmm. right? Does it exist past 8? And does it exist to the left of negative 8? No. So how will we start this off? Our domain is... Um, all, oh. X is all real numbers. Yeah, only of all real numbers. Uh, such that... What's the lowest number? Good, that's right. So it's just between those two points. And what about our range? Um, y, all real numbers. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Such that y is greater than zero, zero, but less than or equal to. That's it. That's your domain and range for that circle. Okay. Okay, in the next one, they've given us three little examples. Uh, f at x is uh, 2x minus 3. Give another one. F at x is negative 3. x plus y squared plus 6. And f at x is the root of uh, 2 minus x. Okay. So they've given us three equations. And they want you to find the domain and range by looking at these equations. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, the best way to do it is to literally graph a function. Okay, Is to graph what these look like. Uh, we can bring up our program so we can get an idea. I'm going to tell you, we know this is going to be linear. And right away, looking at this, this has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So if I was to quickly draw that out, I have negative 3, that's my y-intercept, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, right? So I know I have some line, that's going to go like that forever, and then the same on the way down, okay? So the first one here, we'll call him number 1, that's the number 1, he's going to go forever on the x, and what about all the range? Forever. So, domain and range, we'll do it in right here. What's the domain of the first function going to be? That's it. Any restrictions? No, it goes forever on the domain. What about the range? <coughs> that's right. Any restrictions? No. Boom, oh, that's a linear. Anything linear, unless it's stopped, is, it's just going to exist forever. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. This one's a quadratic. It is a parabola. It's in vertex form. This positive 6 is telling us where the vertex is. The vertex is at positive 6. Okay? This is our, I think we called it C and D when we were showing it to you. This would be like D and this would be your C. Remember, this talks about moving a function up and down 6 units. This one talks about moving it because it's positive. It's actually gone to the left one unit. Okay? So our vertex for a parabola normally starts at zero. It's gone up six units and to the left one. So our new vertex is here. It's been moved from the origin. This is your A value. A is negative. Normally parabolas open upwards. If A is positive, because it's negative, this is a parabola that opens downwards. The three is not as important. It's telling us that it stretches it and makes it thinner, but I'm just going to do a rough sketch of this, okay? And we'll do it in green, so it's a little different. I know that my vertex is there, and it's heading downwards, this parabola. So this is a rough sketch, not an exact of the graph. But those two key elements here, the 6 and the negative, were very important for us, okay? Because it's a parabola or a quadratic, 
I know it's going to go left and right forever. So again, what is my domain of this one going to be? Yeah. Any restrictions? No, no restrictions on the X. The Y, though. The vertex is very important for the Y, and the direction it faces is very important, whether it's going up or down. Okay. For my range, how do I start this off? That's right. Y has to be less than and equal to positive 6. Okay? And the reason it was important the negative is because if it opened upwards, it would have been greater than or equal to 6. right? And the 6, which is our uh, Y value of our vertex, is very important because we need to know how high or low it goes. In other words, this is the max. Okay? That's the max value it has. Okay. This one again, looking at this, I'm going to tell you you're going to need to graph it. Uh, because it's written this way, normally what you do is you factor out a negative. You get something like this, which is x minus 2 underneath, which means your k value, so it flips on the y. I know we haven't really gone over that, so I'm just going to give you a rough idea. Another way you could do this, and actually what we'll do, is I'm going to plug them in for us. Okay, so what I did is quickly on that program I brought up our graphs, remember? Uh, the blue one was a linear equation, which is represented by the blue line. The red one was our parabola, which we had already put out our vertex, and we knew it got stretched. The green one is our root. Okay, This is what happens to the root. Essentially, this point here is 0 and 2, and it goes this way forever. Okay, So let's talk about domain. What's the domain of this guy going to be if he's green? Those coordinates backwards, I'm sorry. <coughs> X is um, less than or equal to two. That's right. Okay. And what is the range of this guy going to be? Um, y only is um, Y is less than. Zero, that's right. That's right. It only exists above zero and it only exists to the left of that number two. So that's our domain range. Okay? So we put it on that page there. Close this up. So that's what we had for that one there. So I know you haven't really learned how to graph roots yet, but there is a way to solve this. Um, square roots. We can find square roots of all numbers except a certain set of numbers. Do you know what you can't find the square root of? Okay, um, can you find the square root of 5? No. Well, you can. It's just a funny number. Let's start with the easier. Can you find the square root of 9? Yeah. yeah. You can find the square root of 5. You can. What's the square root of 1? Can you find that? Yeah. yeah. What, would, what number times itself would equal 1? Yeah. Yep. So we know this would be like 3. This would be uh, 2 point something something. This is 1. Square root of 0, what times itself equals 0? Zero? 0. What about square root of negative 1? Does any number times itself give us a negative? No. Because of the rule, a positive times a positive is a positive, right? Mm -hmm. Or a negative times a negative is a, that's not a is a positive. We actually didn't even find the true real roots here. The true real roots are plus or minus 3. Now, 0, there really is no plus or minus, but for 1, plus or minus 1, technically, plus or minus 2 point blah, 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 blah. Okay? But I can't find the square root of a negative number. So, with that being known, in order to find domain range, you can take the value underneath the root. Okay? We know that can't be a negative number. So, we know that x minus 0 cannot be less than 0. Has to be greater than zero, this value. So we need to figure out what number is going to put us to less than zero when we're talking about this, okay? So what number, when I substitute in for x, would give us, uh, well, would give us zero on the dot? Two. 
2. And in other words, if I just move the 2 to the other side of the equation, right, we'd have x is greater than negative 2. And when I divide by a negative, do you remember the switches? Is that, do you remember that rule? Not really? When you divide with inequalities, let's do it the other way around. I move x to the other side of the equation, I get x is less than 2. So we need to have a number where x is less than 2. Anytime x is greater than 2, when I go to plug it in here, we're going to get a negative number under the square root. Okay? We'll get a negative number under the square root. So in other words, your x, okay, your x is able to represent all the real numbers, right? So our domain can be, oh, that's a funny looking one. Our domain can be, x is every real number such that x must be greater than what? Uh, it has to be greater than 2 or it has to be less than, okay? Less than or it can be equal to, right? Because we can get a 0. Less than or equal to positive 2. So in other words, think of it, instead of working out this math, if this math kind of confused you here, look at this here. If this number was 2, we would get 0, which we can still find the square root 1. If this number was 1, it would be positive 1. If it was negative 2, that's like adding 2, so our number would be 4. But if x is a number like 3, well, then I end up at negative 1, and I can't do it. So x has to be greater than or sorry, x has to be less than or equal to the number 2. That's another way you can look at it. Okay, graphing is usually the easiest way to look at something like this, but you can find roots that way. And again, uh, your y, okay, technically, because it's a root, it's going to be on 0. Because your k value here is, because there's no number here, it's technically 0. As this number changes, it changes too, which you just kind of have to know the rules. But that's a way to find out at least your domain.